Hi everybody, welcome back to Under the Cup. Today we'll be reviewing the Longines Spirit 2 time in 42mm, reference L3812-4636. Alright, so the diameter of the watch is 42mm, while the lug width is 22mm. The thickness, height, or thinness of the watch is 13.90mm, but it wears a lot thinner. And most of that height comes from that dome sapphire crystal. The lug to lug is 49 millimeters without the male end links. The water resistance is at 10 bar or 100 meters thanks to the screw down crown. And it has a bi-directional rotating bezel with a ceramic bezel insert. Now with the technical stuff out of the way, I'd like to talk about the things I like about the watch. One of the main things I like about the watch is its uniqueness. Seems like no matter where you go, um, everyone seems to be copying Rolex. Uh, there's no problem with the Rolex. I love Rolex. Uh, their GMT uh, models are amazing. However, when I was looking for a GMT watch, I actually really liked the uniqueness of Longines. What Longines have done well is a design. It would have been easy to do a bicolored bezel and called a day but they chose a single color and in my opinion the shade of green that they chose on this model was impeccable this gives you a nice british racing green without the green overpowering the actual watch the next thing i'd like to uh talk about and what i think was done well is choosing the anthracite black dial i think this was a good choice because if it had a polished or glossy black dial I think there would have been no contrast between the shine from the bezel and from the dial. And I really liked the placement of everything on the dial. When it comes to Longines logo, the controversial five stars, I really liked how it actually utilized the negative space. I also really like how they used uh, the loomed golden Arabic numerals. Uh, this is unique and it, they're not just using uh, markers and so on. Now, with all the praise that I just gave this watch, you'd think that it's a, per a perfect watch. However, if you want to learn more about how I got this watch, some of the decision-making that I had with this watch, you can read the article on my website, underlookup.com. But to summarize uh, some of the quirks of the watch, um, let's actually start off with the main issue that I have. And that main issue is, um, a very slow date change when you hit midnight. Let me show you what I mean. So if I manually go ahead and change the time on the watch, you're going to notice that once that minute hand hits midnight, it will start moving the date wheel, but then it won't actually complete until I hit around 115 to 120. You'll be able to see it jump and complete. So for a luxury watch, I think that's unacceptable. Um, I don't know if it's a limitation of the complication or the movement, but I have a lot cheaper watches with a date change at midnight. So that's my first quirk that I could get by. Now, the second thing that I think is super annoying is the bracelet. Uh, they opted to over-engineer this quick release uh, feature on the spring bars. And you can see here that when I press down on it, it will detract the little uh, spring bar tips there. It's very hard to zoom in, uh, but I'll press down. And sometimes even it doesn't even register that I'm pressing down on it. Um, I would have preferred, uh, actually, if possible, take the money from this uh feature which I think is the reason why we have male end links and I would have preferred uh, a micro adjust a quick micro adjust in the clasp of the watch um, so you can see me playing around with this watch on my wrist right now and the reason why I'm doing this is to show you um, if you don't wear the watch tight because of those male end links it does actually droop off the side of your wrist, kind of like how I'm pushing it there. Um, and I prefer not to wear my watches that tight. I do like to have a little bit of wiggle room there. 
especially if they don't give me a quick micro adjust. Now, an another gripe that I have, if you see here, um, at this price point for a luxury watch, uh, they shouldn't be using pins. Um, it's very hard to focus, but you can see here that Longine is still using pins rather than screws uh, for the bracelet. Okay, so uh, one of the other things that I have not experienced, uh, but I have heard on the internet, uh, is that uh, some people's uh, date window isn't centered. Uh, so the date in the date window is not centered. Uh, I don't have that problem. I really haven't seen it um, on any of the models that I've handled. Uh, but just keep that in mind if you are thinking about picking this piece up. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, the fact that um, if we actually pick up the watch here, if you put your thumb around the eight o'clock position on the bezel and press down, it does have a bit of a bounce to it. Um, I, at first I thought it was uh, the model that the 80 got for me, uh, but then I quickly realized um, after they got me the new one and um, the bezel actually did not align uh, at the 12 o'clock position, so I ended up getting this model. But out of all the models that I have handled in the stores, they all seem to have that 8 o'clock bounce. Okay, so what I would love to see, or I, I wouldn't say love to see, but features that I think would have just made this uh, watch be the perfect watch, um, other than fixing all the issues that, that I mentioned previously, would be if um, you take a look at the bezel, the triangle is the only thing that's loomed up there. So if you're trying to keep track of a third time zone and it's uh, dark, it's going to be very difficult to actually uh, tell the time there. Um, so I would have loved to see the, the numerals and so on all uh, be loomed as well. Also, if we take a look at the side profile, if... Uh, the lugs were a little bit more angled that would have actually fit the wrist a little bit better and the last thing although um it's more of a me thing uh, i would have loved to see this with cathedral hands i don't know about you guys i love the hands as they are but i think if it had cathedral hands it would have actually uh given it that little bit extra that je ne sais quoi that would have probably made this a little bit more of a perfect watch. Uh, as I mentioned in my article, this is an imperfect, perfect watch. Um, obviously, it has its quirks, but I love this thing. I could not get this off my wrist for the past few months. Um, and the only reason why I did take it off with it was either for functions or for uh, reasons that I needed to wear my other watches. All right, this is the end of the video. I hope this helped you. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things to help me out with that algorithm, and I'll see you next time.